So, um, good morning. Good morning, everybody. I see people are uh, little by little joining. I recognize uh, almost all the names. So, happy to, to see you. Maybe we wait um, one, one or two more minutes uh, just to give uh, all the participants the, the time to join. Maybe I start uh, with uh, the housekeeping issues. Uh, so please mute your microphone during the workshop. Uh, no, please, uh, for your information, note that the event is uh, recorded. Uh, and as well, uh, also, if you do not speak, uh, we will have 30 minutes at the end for, for discussion and, and uh, uh, speaking time. But if you do not speak, please do not uh, uh, put your camera on. So it would be better for everybody to actually focus on the presenters and to the presentation. So maybe one more minute and then uh, and then we start. Okay, I see I see people are joining. So let's uh, let's start. Uh, good morning, uh, everybody, and welcome to the first workshop on uh, business to government data sharing in cities. Uh, I'm Federica Bordelot, policy advisor with uh, EuroCities, and today I'm your moderator. Um, as uh, as just said, uh, just a few uh, housekeeping issues. So to mute, please your microphone, and please note that the the event is uh, indeed is recorded. So uh, as said. This is the first, uh, the first of a series of five workshop. Uh, we can even call it the, the appetizer, if you like, the one that uh, set the scene on business to government uh, data sharing. Um, the city of Amsterdam and the city of Florence are the initiators, uh, those who had the idea to launch this dialogue between uh, the European cities and the commission on the current practices and experiences that uh, cities uh, are, are doing in access and sharing the data with private companies, but also uh, it's an opportunity to highlight the barriers and uh, the challenges that uh, cities are, are facing and to discuss and possibly identify uh, possible uh, solutions. Um, exchanging, uh, discussing and brainstorming on, on more and better uh, data sharing and, and uses in, in cities uh, is particularly timing, I think. Um, not just considering the exponential growth in terms of data that are uh, generated nowadays and therefore the growing uh, importance to, to use uh, them uh, at best, uh, while for at best uh, there might be different meanings, but we will see and we will discuss this uh, with uh, with the participants. Um, but also, it's it's particularly timing also because. Um, and also consequently, maybe, uh, considering the many uh, current and upcoming uh, EU uh, regulation proposals, the, the upcoming funding opportunities and actions that are meant to, to create a harmonized legislative framework uh, in the EU and to enable a secure, uh, trusted and fair uh, environment for, for data sharing and data, um, and data uses in uh, in cities, but also uh, for uh, fostering uh, uh, the full uptake and full upscale of more uh, data access and sharing and use uh, 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 solutions, such as, for instance, the local data platform. And this last point on the upscaling of, of uh, data sharing solutions is also the reason why uh, these uh, workshops are organized in the framework of the Living.eu initiative, um, a partnership of EU cities and communities, but also uh, 
regions and member states that together with the city network like Eurocities, uh, like uh, the Open and Agile Smart Cities uh, and, the living, uh, and, the, and the European Network of Living Labs, together with the European Commission and the Committee of the Regions are promoting and developing together me uh, measures at different levels, like a technical, financial, um, legal, education and capacity building to, to really uh, foster the upscale uh, of digital solutions across the EU. Uh, by the way, for all the cities that are connected today, in case you uh, have not yet uh, signed the, the political declaration and, and if you are not uh, aware or you don't know about this initiative, I really encourage you to visit the Living.eu uh, website and to learn more. But I stop here. Um, I only want to present to you our agenda for, uh, for today. Um, so I give, uh, so we will have uh, many different speakers. We will start with two speakers from the, from the EU institutions. So we have uh, Johan Bodenkamp from DigiConnect, Data Policy and Innovation Unit um, at the European Commission, uh, who will give us an overview of the EU data regulations and current and expected uh, actions. Um, and we will have then uh, a presentation by uh, Marina Micheli from JRC. Uh, she will present a research um, uh, a, a research uh, study with a focus on the modalities to access to private sector data of uh, public interest for uh, for European cities. And then we will have uh, the two uh, cities, um, the city of Amsterdam and Florence, that they will present their experience, challenges and uh, lessons learned. Um, we will have at the end 30 minutes for discussion uh, at the end of the presentation. So unless there are very, very burning questions for our speakers, I really ask you to uh, keep your question for, uh, for the end. So I please, I give uh, the floor uh, now to uh, Ms. Johan Bodenkamp from, from the European Commission for the first uh, uh, presentation. Thank you very much. I will start sharing my presentation now. And I hope you will be able to see it. Can you see it and can you hear me? Yes, I do. Yes. Okay. Yeah, thank thanks. you very much. <laughs> okay. So, um, thank you very much for inviting me here today. I'm uh, glad to be part of the appetizer workshop on BTG data sharing, in which I've also worked a bit. And indeed, um, I will now, before that, there will be more focused discussions on BTG data sharing. I will uh, give a brief overview of the various EU data strategy um, uh, actions and the philosophy behind that that have been put in place and that are taking place um, in the coming years. So, the European uh, data strategy that maybe uh, most of you know, presented last year in February 2020 with a bold vision, a vision to create gradually a single European data space, that is to say, a true single data market where data is open, um, where data uh, is open, uh, what do I say, where data uh, come, can Sorry, that is open to data from across the world. I have something popping up. I will take it down. So, sorry. So what does it mean? It means um, it, that uh, in this vision, we would have a, a single space where data is able to flow freely within the EU across countries and across sectors, where there would be a high availability of high quality data and that the data sharing and access will be done uh, in line with European rules and values. And of course, we have to think of GDPR here, but not only. And finally, that the rules for access and use of data are fair, practical and clear. Now, the data strategy um, is uh, being deployed uh, through four pillars, four main pillars that you see on the screen. Uh, 
and I will focus uh, in my short overview only on the first pillar and the last pillar. So the enablers, the, the second pillar is uh, about uh, high investments in uh, data, IT infrastructures and architectures and the competences is focusing of course on the human element of making sure that we have enough uh, basic digital skills in general and uh, data literacy but also that we have enough highly skilled uh, professions uh, to work in the in the data economy data scientists etc so the first pillar is focusing on uh, creating a cross sectoral governance framework for data access and use that is to say a legislative horizontal framework that um, um, puts in place uh, horizontal governance of data spaces and other cross-sectoral measures for data access and use. And then the fourth pillar, the last one, I'll come to that a bit later, is the gradual rollout of so-called common European data spaces in crucial sectors or domains. Now let's first see, say some words about this first pillar of cross-sectoral governance framework. Now, uh, four key legislative instruments have been put in place or are being proposed or are being worked on and of course uh, this is not uh, this is not all um, there is also sectoral legislation that is already in place uh, but this is uh, let's say the core of um, the legislative instruments that we are working on to put in place this horizontal framework and then of course i have to start first with the data governance act that was proposed in november of last year that is really focusing on trying to ensure trust in data transactions then a month later in December, there was also as part of the digital uh, single uh, act, um, a, a digital market act that was proposed, which also has a data related aspect. Um, as you see on the screen, it is trying to regulate the market power uh, based on data, uh, among other things, in order to make sure that important online platforms that are uh, that are working as gatekeepers um, cannot uh, misuse, if I may say so, their market power based on that on that function. Then by the end of this uh, quarter, so uh, by June normally, we should be able to propose uh, the implementing act on the so-called high value data sets. So this is uh, focusing on making available as real open public sector data, um, certain data sets that are considered of very high value for the economy um, as a open public good. And finally, we are working now on a so-called data act that is going to be presented by the end of this year. And there the focus is on ensuring fairness in the allocation of data value among the actors of the data economy. So some words about those, um, those elements, those key uh, instruments. And here we have, let's say, the main elements of the Data Governance Act. So the act was proposed um, in November and is currently being discussed by the co-legislators, uh, European Council, uh, Council, sorry, the Council of Ministers and the European Parliament. And you see here the, the, the four main elements that it tr tries to put in place in order to lead to more trust and therefore wider data sharing. So first of all, it proposes a framework for data intermediaries, the emerging class of services that is to function as true neutral third parties in order to more easily connect data holders on the one hand and users on the other hand. Then it's proposing a framework for data altruism which should put in place um, the possibility to more easily allow individuals and company companies to uh, process their data or to have their data processed for purposes of general interest. Then there is a chapter that is um, um, uh, trying to make available under certain conditions the reuse of so-called protected public data. So now we're speaking about public data that are not part of the Open Data Directive, outside the scope of the Open Data Directive, but they are protected because others have rights on that data, personal data, intellectual property rights, etc. So this, uh, this chapter of the Data Governance Act is trying to put in place basic conditions on the which reuse of such data, public data, could be allowed. And then finally, um, an expert group is going to be put in place, so-called European Data Innovation Board, in order to make all the stakeholders um, work on these various uh, issues and uh, make sure that the frameworks are put in place correctly and make, can make it work. Now, um, a word on this uh, implementing act of high value data sets, where we hope that by the end of June, um, we could propose to the Open Data Committee the list of uh, data sets that would be uh, in this act. And what does it mean? It means that these data sets would be made available for free 
in machine readable formats via APIs and if relevant as bulk downloads. In, um, it covers the six uh, large domains that you see on the left hand side and of course the idea is that these, um, these data sets that have high socioeconomic value can really be made available as open public data for uh, data actors in order to innovate and uh, propose new products and services based on those data. And finally a small word on the data act so again uh, by the end of this year the focus is on ensuring fairness in the allocation of data value and it would uh, address issues that are related for example to usage rights of co-generated internet of things data coming from either industry smart tractors smart smart uh, uh, industrial uh, machines as well as from uh, people like you and me for example when we would use a smart a smart fridge and a special mention here for B2G data sharing, which is, is of course the topic of this series of workshops, because in the Data Act, we also uh, intend to foster this type of data sharing for the public good and taking there into consideration the recommendations of the expert group report that uh, I think you know. So currently the study to support the impact assessment is underway and we hope to be able to launch very soon the stakeholder consultation. And we count on you there to, um, and make your voice heard and uh, come with your uh, input. Now coming now to the fourth pillar uh, of the data strategy that is focusing on the rollout of the so-called common European data spaces. Now when we speak about a data space what do we mean uh, here at, at, at the European Commission if I may say so. We basically mean um, a concept that is uh, made of, of, of a space where data is pulled together and that contains two uh, major elements that you see on the bottom of the slide. It would mean a space where you have data IT infrastructures in place together with the data governance mechanism in order to allow the access and the sharing of data in that space according to common rules on access and usage rights. Now, the data strategy has proposed to start um, to uh, create gradually data spaces in important strategic sectors or domains that you see in the center of the slide, health, agriculture, green deal. And there um, you, can, uh, you can have, of course, a governance system, systems, mechanisms that take into account the specific aspects of those sectors. And then uh, when these different uh, data spaces in the sectors will be created gradually and grow, there is also the issue of making them connect via standards, interoperability uh, tools, so that at the very end, uh, coming back to the bold vision that I mentioned earlier, we would have really a rich pool of data that is uh, able to free flow to flow freely across sectors and the countries in the EU in full respect of GDPR and other European values and have a horizontal framework for data governance and data access. Now, the new Digital Europe program um, is going to um, fund and stimulate the rollout of the common European data spaces. And apart from specific um, uh, funding of those sectoral data spaces that you saw in the previous slide, there's also going to be funding for a so-called data spaces support center that really is going to try to create the stakeholder network to coordinate the efforts in identifying common standards and interoperability, common building blocks um, in order to have a, a harmonious uh, rollout of those so-called sectoral data spaces, together with funding of the data infrastructures. So now we're speaking about the cloud to edge based services that would be the underlying uh, IT infrastructure, technical infrastructure, making those data spaces work. Now the draft work program for this uh, next year is being finalized and we really hope that very soon we will be able to launch the first call. And as a last slide, um, the first call should normally also uh, be dealing with a subset data space of the so-called Green Deal data space. That is uh, hopefully for uh, your interest, that is to say a data space for climate neutral and smart communities. So the living in the EU um, movement or partnership is of, of course a great uh, a great initiative in order to uh, work together uh, on this uh, on this idea of a data space for smart communities and as a first step in this uh, call normally there would be a coordinated uh, uh, support action in order to try to bring together the already existing 
local data ecosystems in cities, in communities, also taking uh, into account the high value data sets and for example, Inspire platforms. So all of this together is the beginning of, uh, of a journey to create um, uh, the data spaces among which the smart communities data space. And um, I hope that uh, you will be uh, contributing to that and, and see uh, the, the benefits of gradually creating those data spaces in order to really reap the benefits of the data economy in Europe. And this is it for my very short uh, intervention of a first overview. Thank you very much and welcome to having some questions maybe later um, at the end of the, the presentations. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, so we we have seen that uh, many many opportunities, uh, many and many actions are also uh, are, are really upcoming. Uh, also, we are really all waiting for both uh, uh, the uh, the data act and uh, and the public consultation there to to be able for all our cities also to contribute in that respect. And of course, for the first call of the, the digital Europe programs, uh, because as you have explained, there are many opportunities really for for data sharing. And and, uh, and for our cities to, to really use uh, and have access to more to more data. So great, thank you very much. Um, very interesting. And now we um, we I give the floor to Marina Micheli uh, from the JRC uh, to to present uh, this uh, this study and uh, and uh, the research that have been uh, developed uh, in the in the past. Uh, Month, uh, I think that really focus on the modalities to access to private sector data of public interest by uh, cities. Um, I don't want to spoil anything, but it's a very interesting study with very uh, interesting outcomes. Uh, so please, Marina. Thank you. Thank you, Federica. Can you hear me well? I hope. Uh, yes, so, yes, very thank you. So in my in my presentation, uh, so I will um, say a few words on the operational models that can be adopted by municipality to get access to private health data of public interest. So I will draw a bit from the literature and um, and the other from the findings of the study conducted at the JRC in 2019, indeed. Uh, so not 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 super recent, but hopefully still recent. So the literature on B2G data sharing is um, well somehow still uh, embryonic because most publications are from practitioners, think tank, policy officer, and uh, while academic publications on the topics are usually under the wider umbrella of data collaborative. But in such analysis, uh, I want to point out that B2G data sharing is understood as involving a wider range of actors, so uh, including also nonprofit NGOs, and is also taking place at uh, a different scale, so also at the national, transnational, uh, transnational, and so it's not just on the national and, and city level. But at the same time, this publication and, and others uh, provide, uh, um, of course, uh, interesting uh, and important analysis on the difficulties and the obstacles for B2G data sharing uh, from the economic, uh, uh, regulatory, technical, operational, and societal point of view that I will not uh, delve now into. But also besides that, in this uh, literature, um, basically there is an examination of uh, use cases and best practices uh, from which uh, have been derived these operational models for B2G data sharing that I'm going to uh, discuss a little bit. And um, in this research at the JRC, uh, we explore the same topic, uh, but uh, specifically looking at cities and specifically looking at the perspective, so the point of view of uh, local administration. So looking at using semi-structured uh, interviews uh, with chief data officers, chief technology officers, or smart city officers, or team leaders uh, from 12 European cities. Um, conducted in 2019. Uh, so these are one, uh, the two outputs at the moment from this research. So this uh, operational model, so in this table, you can see six of these uh, operational models that have been so far uh, described and uh, adopted by municipalities for accessing private sector data of public interest. Of course, these models uh, are based on different collaboration dynamics 
which means they are based on, for instance, different level of engagement of the actors, of the public and private actors in terms of um, defining the format to which the data is shared, analyzed and used. They're also based on different data flows. They can be unidirectional data flows or bidirectional or multidirectional data flows. They can be different by scope. They can be purpose bound or more flexible and and other and for other and they are different also according to many other parameters so in general the literature didn't identify one approach that is recommended or best from the others uh, um, or that suits all situations so but at the same time from the literature we can learn some lesson from the experiences that cities have so far uh, in this realm so uh, looking at some of these models at least uh, what data ownership, as you can, uh, as you already know, uh, is, for instance, when private companies share data uh, with public bodies uh, at no cost uh, on a voluntary basis and usually for corporate social responsibility. In this case, uh, data is shared in different form, can be shared as aggregated or anonymized data set, can be shared through APIs or interface dashboard or data driven product. It's very wide range of um, different granularity of data that is shared. This is just one example among the many that could be uh, chosen. And for instance, the city of London uh, established a partnership with uh, LinkedIn, the social network platform. Uh, and LinkedIn provided a no cost an analysis of the real demand for technology jobs in the city, scraping the profiles on, on the social network uh, platform. So providing basically data that was more recent, more fine grained on this particular uh, sector than that collected from the labor, labor market statistic. Uh, but from, so from the interviews, um, when, when data donorship was discussed, we collected a perspective more in general, not about the specific use case before. We observed that the study participant basically um, acknowledged that there was a key enabling factors that made a difference in terms of being or not a beneficiary of data donorship, which was the reputation of the city of being uh, an innovative advance or a smart city and so called. So basically, uh, from the interviews, uh, we observed that cities with such characteristics are more likely to be contacted uh, by companies because, of course, they can increase the visibility of the company and can also help basically develop, uh, they have the capacity to help uh, to develop the socially relevant uses of the private sector data. No? So uh, according to some participants, this could raise an ethical question in terms of do we want to have uh, this free lunch if others are paying of it? So how sustainable is such approach in the end? Because of course, we can create a sort of richer, got richer effect uh, between different cities. On the opposite end, uh, there is also the, the possibility for city to acquire data, establishing an agreement with a data supplier for uh, purchasing a specific data asset. For example, the city of Milan a few years ago, uh, in the context of an exploratory activity, acquire data from Vodafone and to understand how many people were uh, moving in the city or using the city during uh, particular key events of the city, such as the fashion week or the design week. But similar to the previous example um, of data donorship, uh, these operational models of access is usually for a one-time only purpose-bound um, and one-directional forms of sharing, as you can see. And from the interviews, uh, we, uh, I mean, we observed that um, the representative of the municipality that we talked with uh, were either very cautious um, or even against uh, using such uh, models, uh, such operational models. Uh, first of all, they felt that um, somehow they, they lack power in their relation with the data holders because you know, several negotiations were needed uh, before they could uh, obtain data of good enough quality to be used in a meaningful and relevant way from them. And so basically municipality were implementing these in pilot or experimental project, mainly to assess the quality of the data and the opportunity that it actually could afford. Also, in other cases, uh, local governments, uh, the representatives that we talk with, uh, refused the idea of uh, acquiring data through monetary exchanges because they were not interested 
they did not have the resources or they did not find these appropriate to pay for such kind of data as well. A third way uh, could be um, data sharing pools. So local governments can establish partnerships that uh, with private companies that involve the mutual sharing and or jointly analysis of data. Um, in data sharing pools, as you already know, so different actors integrate, analyze, and use data collaboratively. So this is just one example from the city of Ghent that collaborated with, uh, with Waze in the project uh, Connected Citizen Program and basically exchange data about the road system and Waze exchange data about traffic. And then the, it was used in a collaborative manner. But other municipalities indeed are, or association of municipality um, or regional uh, area are establishing much more uh, complex data sharing pools that are bi-directional or multi, that are not bi-directional, but are multi-directional uh, data flows within a wider range of uh, private sector actors than this one. What is interesting from the interview is that respondents showed a, a very positive attitude from this kind of partnership, but even if they didn't have yet engaged in such experiences. So it was also in terms of an, an idealistic way of uh, for sharing data. So these were described as co-creation approaches that uh, allowed private and public companies to experiment, solve challenges together. And most importantly, it was underlined that instead of paying for data, so being clients, the municipality could actually be part, so could collaborate and seek mutual benefits and taking part also in the definition of how the granularity, for instance, for we, of, to which the data could be shared. Uh, so negotiation were much more uh, easier in this format. Important enablers for these could were the import, interpersonal professional network and weak ties of, of uh, the SIP data officer or uh, the SIP data office in general. So in, pra in practice, data partnership and sharing pools were much more easier to establish if uh, there was a relation with the people already uh, that were working in the company. And also, of course, again, the know-how and internal resources and capacity of the municipality, of course, was very important as well. A final model that I want just to highlight to you is uh, what I call data sharing obligation in city contract. So basically, these are contractual clauses that are uh, included in tenders for subcontracted uh, services of a city. So in such a way, basically data sharing is clarified, is clearly defined in advance. However, of course, this is not feasible for all kinds of data and it can, it can only be applied when these contracts are renewed. Uh, an advocate for such an approach is, for instance, the city of Barcelona uh, that uh, plan for a social act on city data uh, so basically has advocated for introducing uh, such clauses in contract to guarantee that the value of data that is collected by public infrastructures could be given back to citizens. So for participants in the qualitative study, uh, some, of these, some of those participants already used this, others were considering to do so in the future, so to improve uh, such operational models in their, in their system. And the respondents in general, of course, tended to be in favor of this method because it allowed them to keep control uh, over data of public interest that was collected, as I said, as a byproduct basically of delivering public services. For instance, water supply, bike sharing uh, services, parking meters, and so on. So it was a way to systematize access to data in advance and also to define the format and the modality for the, for the exchange, for instance. So other operational models for B2D data sharing are data research partnership, but I will not go into detail here, and also challenges and hackathons. So for instance, these are um, these are usually a one-time only or one a year event uh, and are purpose-bound. So maybe they are specific on a topic such as mobi mobility or uh, environmental transition and so on, but they are basically useful for uh, helping local administration to understand the potential of data and the problems that this data could have to, to address. So what conclusion so far uh, from this short presentation is that access to private sector data is of course an emerging field and there are divergent practices. Uh, we see that if companies decide whether to donate or share their data on which city, there might be a gap between city that is reinforced 
And uh, a key aspect is, is the engagement. So we see that our access to data as clients is the least preferred option. So it's important for municipality not to get access to data, but to have some degree of control and to be involved uh, in how this data is arranged and shared so that it could be used actually efficiently. Um, so, so for a more inclusive local data governance uh, at the local level, we could start from looking at cooperative engagement that we have seen between stakeholders in these data sharing pools and also data sovereignty that could be fostered um, to uh, data sharing obligation. Uh, of course, the next question is how to be uh, how these can be upscaled. And uh, of course, one important point is the cooperation between city that was also mentioned uh, tangentially in some interviews. Uh, and this, uh, of course, the key uh, strategy uh, to uh, move away from bilateral uh, relations uh, that uh, have been described in this presentation. So just to conclude, the findings of the interviews, of course, are not representative uh, for European city, but uh, they are, of course, specific from, from the European context. And they basically aim to offer some insights into the perspective of those that are working in the field and also to provide uh, food for thoughts uh, for a workshop like this one and, and for the following one, hopefully. So thank you. Thank you very much, Marina. Uh, indeed, very interesting findings. I think uh, that it really shows uh, like uh, cities are really engaged and uh, and they are really experimenting, you know, you, new practices and, uh, and and models for for data sharing. Uh, however, we we see that uh, we also have to consider a bit the the, the difference that there are in, in Europe also between cities. So not all cities have the opportunity actually uh, or the experiences the capacity capacities to enter into these uh, different uh, negotiations or, or, or models to experiment these models and that's why it really is needed like uh, not this fragmented environment but really have an harmonized uh, way to look at, uh, at data sharing and um, yeah and indeed so it's um, it's a it's a really interesting I think uh, food for thought uh, uh, and uh, a good way to uh, introduce uh, then also the the uh, upcoming presentations uh, from uh, uh, we start with the city of of Amsterdam uh, so uh, Ron. Uh, uh, Ron van der Vel, he's uh, he's, uh, um, he's he's from this. He's working at the city of of Amsterdam uh, in charge of uh, the relationship really with the private companies uh, like Mastercard, Google, many different uh, uh, companies uh, to really establish relationship and exchange of uh, of data. So I I give the floor to uh, to Ron for uh, for his presentation and uh, for we're really curious to learn more on uh, on the experience of Amsterdam. Thanks. Here from the city of Amsterdam, Ron van der Lans. I um, have a brief hesitation on our experience in BTG uh, data sharing. Um, what is my message? Uh, we like to learn from everybody. So let's start uh, share experience. And uh, in this uh, presentation lessons learned, I will only use one uh, use case to clarify uh, some lessons learned. Uh, other present other use cases might be in other workshops. And the main message is uh, for us is like cooperate, uh, work together with uh, with uh, with big companies uh, because they have uh, they need us as much as we need them. Um, and. Uh, it's really not about the technology, it's more about the whole process, how you cooperate together and start work uh, to work bottom up. Um, start with small, but have a bigger plan, know where you're going to and be sure that you can scale up. Otherwise, these big companies are not very interested. Um, and very important also is like that to work step by step, the results and the budgets, um, are, are very important for steering the whole change process. And be assured that this whole change process is very pro uh, political. Uh, so um, in this presentation, I will use uh, these four items. I will have a short preface on the, on the data part, 
and then how you can prepare uh, before start sh sharing data. And then I will have a look on uh, sharing data from the government to businesses, what's in for them and what's in for us. And then, of course, the, the data that they have that uh, we want to use as a government. Uh, but before I get to that, I want to have a short focus on, on, on really the, the data that we as government have, because there is really some issues. Um, I'm not, I'm not, uh, when I tell this to, to uh, cities, sometimes they're very surprised because we have so much data that we, that we have more than several thousands of data items we are using here in Amsterdam. And that is much, much more than any company is using. So um, this makes it interesting, but also complex because it has uh, influence on the density of the data and also the, quant the, the quality of the data. Um, so uh, in many cases, the regulations are, uh, the administrations are not really up to date and not really uh, uh, complete. Uh, and statistics um, are mostly on a, on a yearly or quarterly basis. And we have very uh, little real-time data. Although mobility is a, a positive exception about uh, this uh, this thing. But the, the, the data quality is also something I want to express because that's something that we as a government need to work on. How come um, historically we are uh, having data Especially on the not the very big registrations, like uh, like the, the more registrations or small registrations, the, the historic use is very small. It's uh, only a department or a, uh, a group of people are, is using this data, and uh, then they don't have so much uh, money to to invest in the in the data quality. But as soon as you open up your data, the user group is is growing. And that is one of the, the reasons that Amsterdam says is first share your data with your colleague. Is th that's already complicated before sharing it to the world. But when you uh, want to share it in the world, you really need investment. And that's a political issue because uh, the, uh, the use and the, the, the added value of the better quality data uh, is um, also for its own organization, but more for the, for the market. And that's strange because uh, the market is using having the pros, and we have to 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 pay. So that's that's uh, that's sometimes a problem in some discussions. Um, and when you want to get access to the data, it's most of the time it's very hard because security is a priority uh, in, in in many uh, IT uh, uh, departments in in in, in cities. And many uh, systems are standalone or have a shared ownership and it's uh, uh, prevented by uh, another company. Uh, and many cases like the smaller registrations, a lot of smaller registrations are in MS Office, uh, Excel and so on. So that's not really good for sharing high quality data. So that's something that we as cities and government has to work on. And another thing is like, when when you want to have a really data-driven uh, uh, city organization, um, the best data is outside. And it's the, 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 the companies have the, the most interesting data. And in fact, we don't really know uh, here and now how our city is doing. Uh, the other companies are are uh, have better data. And that's also this gives the explanation why it is important to uh, to share the data and have access to this kind of data. When you look at this this data, um, uh, you have traditional businesses, uh, and we have to be sure that they, when we talk to them and say we want to have access to your data, they have so many different kinds of data too. Uh, it's from the primary process, uh, also uh, process on on production, on uh, productivity, on sales and markets, uh, even from their uh, 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 partners, uh, they have financial data, and when we say we want to have access to your data, we have to make sure, in my vision, that we want to have access to this kind of data. So it's primarily to the pri uh, primary process. Um, and then, of course, you have the, the companies in the platform economies, which is a completely different data. That the, the data is the company in most uh, uh, cases, and in fact. 
these these data is so much interesting because they subscribe public space or they will have big uh, influence on our citizens and so on. And um, it's also good to know that they are very highly specialized. So when we work with these big tech companies, their data is is very uh, uh, most of the time very good quality, and that's a problem because we want to cooperate with them and our data. Uh, has less uh, less quality, so that's really an issue to work to work on. Um, and so, uh, if we talk about data act, I think this is also a very interesting area to to cooperate with these these kind of companies. And when we uh, we have, we work already for more than six years uh, on data cooperations with the big big companies, and in many cases we, we have a lot of. Yes, uh, answers, and we have a very ex uh, nice experience. I want to show you later on. But uh, the, in many cases, the the, the, the action is like uh, we cannot because of privacy reason of court petition or whatever. And in many cases, it's um, a way to say no to us. Uh, so we should be aware of the thing. Like uh, we truly believe, like when you work together with them, there should be also something in for them. Uh, it's it's uh, uh, it's not something okay. We want your data. Thank you very much. When we are not paying, there should be something in for them too. But then on the circum circum rules. Um, the other thing is like when you start working with them and you look at the legal uh, thing of them, they will send you all kind of contracts uh, and a non-disclosure agreement or a terms and condition document. And when you read those documents, most of the time they are based on a business to business relationship. And we as government, we are really uh, depending on other rules like uh, we should be transparent there. Uh, we cannot sign any uh, contracts that said we cannot be open about it. So there are big conflicts. And another thing is like these contracts most of the time are uh, based on your uh, American law. And uh, like a, a being a Dutch city, we have to have these, these things in Dutch law. So that's something that's really uh, important to work in. And, and our uh, uh, experience is that it's really not a problem. Uh, it's only if you make it clear, like you never will sign something based on a US uh, a treatment or, or uh, something on a business to business uh, relationship. And it's the city of Amsterdam. We have an, an NDA based on on uh, the, the public role that we have. And in the beginning, I was really surprised. Like, can we do that? But these big companies, they don't they don't care. They will have a, a, a look at it and they will sign. So stick to your own rules, and uh, be aware of the th the fact that companies have to uh, get used to to work with 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 the government because they're really not. And of course, when, uh, whenever you talk about sharing data, in no situation there should be any discussions on, on, on GDPR or other privacy sensitive things. Uh, keep away from that. Uh, there's so many things to, to share without the discussion. Also, uh, never share something that uh, where business confidential things from their customers in, is in the data. You should never do that. And we aware that uh, like the most data that we share at the moment is aggregated data and be aware of uh, defined limits on how many cases should be on uh, aggregated data data. And you, there's a lot of things to gain. So um, uh, please uh, 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 follow, uh, get that rule and, and there's a lot, lot of things to win. Uh, and of course, there's technology, and I can start a, a, a whole discussion on models for data sharing and using technology. But I think it's for this presentation, it's out of scope because it's, there's no special insights for B2D EG data sharing. Of course, the technology is important, it should be there, but it should work. And that's all I am going to say about it in this presentation. Um, then uh, sharing uh, business, uh, government, government to, to business. Uh, first, giving away our data. Uh, we started doing that already about 10 years ago with our open data programs. Because, uh, in my vision, when I have contacts with, uh, with uh, cities, 
there's not real uh, big development in that area. It's just they keep on going on. Um, and um, uh, we still have the problem of the of the the, uh, the business uh, uh, the, the data quality. So that, that, that lies a, a big problem. And and uh, big tech is really uh, critical on that. And they all always make selections. They will say, okay, uh, what can we use? What can we can we use? And if we want to cooperate with them, this is something we should work on. Um, but on the other hand, it's more and more important for us, uh, being government, that the data that we have is adopted by these big tech companies. Uh, it's critical, and I will show you in a, in, a, in, a, in an example uh, later on uh, how we see it. So, um, and other, one other thing is like uh, Amsterdam is the biggest city in Amsterdam in, in, in Holland, um, and we have a lot of contact with the uh, big tech uh, companies. But we are always aware of the fact that we can have these contacts and smaller cities don't. Uh, so when we work with them, we are always looking on upscaling from the start. I will give you an example for this. And it's a very, very, it starts with a very simple thing, but it will grow to a national network. It might be interesting. This is about tunnel closures. So um, we are, we want to have uh, tunnel closures in navigation systems. And in fact, we started off with uh, with uh, uh, our tunnel uh, management system. When a, a traffic operator pushes a button, it will close the barrier and will uh, uh, the same system will put the red cross over the, over the road. But at the same moment, a very small data feed through an API will is be sent to the national data access point, um, where it will be picked up by by Google. Uh, by Google Maps uh, within five minutes, and then uh, it will be used uh, as, by the, the Google Maps algorithm as a trusted partner. Um, and within five minutes, all car navigations are changed to alternative routes. routes. So uh, the, the cars will not go into our tunnels and wait in line for their pollute, polluting the city. Uh, but then uh, historically, when when Google will do it with their own system, they will use algorithms and say like, "Is pet our patterns changing?" Historically, it took 30 minutes before they changed the the, uh, the tunnels to closed, and now it's less than five minutes. And with this, um, with a few tunnels we have, we have not a lot of, a lot of tunnels. Um, we already have a lot of pros. Yeah? So many kilometers unnecessary travel saved. Uh, 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 CO2 saved uh, and, and uh, less uh, nuisance for our citizens. But in looking at the big picture, this is only small. So what we try to do is, uh, uh, what I want to uh, say is like, what's important in, in this, this story is that uh, the, the system sends the data to the national exit points. As long as there is a, uh, a human being sending this data, Google will never trust it, but the fact that they, they trust it as a trusted partner because the technology is doing the thing. Now, having this as a first result, we are really looking at uh, looking for a scaling up. So, um, tunnel closures is one thing, but the other thing is like we are we are working already on closures uh, in other forms, uh, event closures, uh, bridge closures, which uh, is always implemented, and we work on other things. So, we have a bigger result. But the other thing is like we also work on uh, a national network, uh, which will have even a, a bigger result. Uh, and it, might, it will be very, very nice to um, have the, the, uh, this uh, as a European uh, scale up. Might be very interesting. How do we do this? How would, do we build this national uh, network? Uh, this is situation when Amsterdam started it, and this is in the middle. You see the, the national access point for data for uh, travel data, and we bring the, our data to uh, only a couple of uh, uh, companies. But the first thing we do now is uh, we will put level playing field uh, in, in the system because, of course, it's good that all uh, suppliers of the same kind of technology can use this kind of data, and we actually work with them. At the moment, to 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 use our data, and the other thing is like, 
we will be working on a, 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 a partner data quality uh, because we know that when we all have a national uh, uh, network, not all data that will be supplied will be of uh, good quality. And that's really the one first thing for for uh, companies like uh, Google and, and TomTom to, to use our data. And the other thing is we do is now, and, and, and we are working on step, step two, three, and four at the moment. Um, it's like the, the, the uh, we already invited uh, one new city, city of The Hague, uh, one of the process provinces and uh, the National Road Authority to use also the same kind of uh, technology and, and, and supply their data in the same way that we do. And they really like it and they are really busy with it. So this is something we'll work on. But finally, we want to have a, one big um, a, a, a network of, of uh, road authorities working together. And if one of the things is like the green lines you see from the right to the left, that's information that their service providers will, uh, something like a report, like how are they really using our data? And these reports will be sent to the, the to the road authorities, something very critical in this, this building this network. And one last thing about this, this use case, I want to uh, say is like, for this, for these companies, scaling up is very important. And uh, the only thing that we ask them to do is to connect to the partner data quality. And as soon as uh, they have done that, there's nothing extra that they should do because uh, every time they will see new cities, new road authorities connect to the network, and the the, the data, the, the the quality of their service will grow without them doing anything about that. So this is one of the examples we have for working together with uh, with Google. Uh, and, and you see, we work now together for five and a half years together with them. You see an overview of all the, the, the projects we do together with them. And you can also make, see clearly that not everything is uh, very uh, successful. We are, uh, and some of them are, are stopped. We can explain why they stopped because uh, they didn't fit. Other things are implemented and we are working on national or worldwide implementations. Uh, I hope to uh, tell you something about also these experience in, in our later workshops. And one of the things I want to share with you is like to work together with Google, how, how does it work? Uh, like uh, one of the things is like Google is, is critical on their partners. Um, and they, they like to work with cities because they say, well, we don't want to talk, we want to act. And one of the things they say is like, let's make some mistakes. Um, and they say we work agile by definition, and um, they they really want to have a high frequency of interaction, and uh, some nice examples, but I don't have time for that now. Um, and of course, Amsterdam is also critical on their part. We select partners because of the added value and uh, how their business ethics. Um, and, and of course, uh, we can work together with that company, but we always have to look on level playing field. Um, and what does it mean with how it, we organize it as the city of Amsterdam? One thing is like we have a team of CTO innov innovation. I work in this team and it grew the last five years from four people to uh, uh, 200 people at the moment. And everybody there is young and works agile. Um, and to, it's it's to 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 close the gap in in, in the big culture that, that change that, that, that between these technology partners and and, and our government, um, and also working as a CTO member, we select departments and colleagues. Uh, can they work together with, with? Can they work agile? Can we help them? And we manage the context, the the, the appointments, deliverables, the timing, and so on, and. Uh, in, in some of the situ situations, we are now a development partner of, uh, of Google, of Google Maps in face. And we, when we want to work with them, it's, it's very uh, interesting for, for Amsterdam because uh, it, that gives many pros. We can steer them. But when we want to do them, we have reaction times for, uh, for less than a, year, than, 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 than a day because they really want to interact with us. Uh, um, and of course, uh, having this very uh, a positive thing. We also have 
principal discussions with like like uh, about data as, uh, sovereignty and what is the role of this this company so it's always looking at what is the subject you want to t talk uh, work on and does what does it bring for the city and i try to explain uh, what what the, the pros are here one other thing is like the the uh, well, i Rana, i just wanted to to remind you about the the timing yeah thank you thanks um maybe if you're not interested i i will skip the last thing on on google no, no, I mean, it's, it's not that, it's just to, to, to be aware. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, our experience with, with working with Google is like, uh, one of the things, it's, it's, it's very hard sometimes because these companies are almost 100% organized in vertical. Eh? They're really product or oriented and there's nothing like an account manager for cities. So what we, what we do is like, uh, and, and the other thing is like they are very uh, targeted uh, oriented. So uh, every time they ask us when we want to do something or they do us with this, what's the effect for citizens? Uh, for in fact, the users of Google, uh, they say. Uh, and the other thing is like they have, they always focus on scale. The products uh, uh, are worldwide. And this means for the city of Amsterdam that we uh, try, uh, we have to find a team that has targets that fits to our needs. It's very strange and we are very lucky because we have a personal uh, liaison who works in, this, in the Google office in Amsterdam who helps us with that, but that's the only way it will work. Uh, and frequently we have to wait or we, we, get, we get no, but in other situations we are very uh, uh, successful, very, this thing is very positive. Um, and one other thing we want, I want to, uh, Share you with this like uh, working together with them and having try to have shared goals. It's it's frightening easy. It's like uh, when it, it's a goal of the city. It's almost also the same goal goes for Google, which makes which is it's very interesting. Um, I can skip uh, this uh, this thing because Maria, Marina had a much more uh, complex uh, uh, better story about this. And I'll end. Here, this is my last slide. Um, I want to share some golden rules for data cooperation with you. Um, one of the things is uh, work on clear goals. Make sure why you want to share data and if possible, work on shared goals. Uh, and very important is like, uh, there's no way uh, in, in, in some situations we have discussions on, can we use our data? And when we are not making sure that there's a big pro for them too, without uh, any other discussions, in many cases, uh, companies will not do this. This is not for Google. This is completely for, for all the data partnerships we have uh, in the city. And important is also like start small, learn and, and grow bigger, but organize upscaling from the start. And eh? we do that in all our data partnerships. Uh, being uh, Amsterdam, the biggest city in, 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 in Holland, uh, from the beginning, we start thinking like, how can small cities or smaller cities uh, 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 also provide from this kind of data uh, uh, cooperations. And as I said before, it's like uh, the whole, uh, we see it some, uh, as a change process. Uh, you start to work in a different way. And that change process is also, uh, in many cases, political. Uh, really, uh, when you talk about budgets and so on, like when you work, you build up a network, as I showed you with, uh, with the Google Maps, it's important to know which step uh, who's going to pay for it and, and, and uh, how, how the pros and cons work. Um, one other thing is like data minimalization. It's very crucial. Like when you share data with, 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 uh, with each other, when you ask data of a company, don't ask more than you really, really need at the moment now. Uh, because it, you might not know, know, but in maybe in the next step, some other company or participant in the network will say, I'm against this. And if you don't need it, don't ask for it. <laughs> and other th one other thing is like uh, the playing, uh, uh, playing uh, a level playing field. It's, it's very, very important. Uh, we show you that we start working with Google, uh, but as soon as was possible, we made it open for their competitors. Otherwise, we will have political uh, discussions and, uh, and you can't do that. And the other thing is like, 
when you look at all these aspects, all details are important. So it's really interesting, but it's not very easy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, a lot of lessons learned. Uh, I think it was uh, extremely interesting, uh, really, to to learn from from the experience of Amsterdam and uh, especially with uh, with Google. Uh, um, I think it's it's very interesting for you. Uh, I mean, to learn all this and all for all other cities. I'm actually thinking that maybe we could organize like a a, a specific event for all our members of EuroCities to to share even more in details uh, the these uh, these experiences. So um, thank you very much. I I want now to to give the floor to the city of Florence, Alessandra. Uh, Barbiere uh, and uh, Chiara Lorenzini to uh, to present their lessons learned and their experience uh, on, uh, on on sharing data and uh, with the different stakeholders and uh, so not only so for with the businesses but how they also involved uh, the other ecosystem players. Uh, thanks, um, Alessandra. Thank you, Federica, and uh, good morning to all colleagues. It is a real pleasure today to be here and have the opportunity to share uh, with you, together with my colleague uh, Chiara Lorentini, that is a mobility data expert uh, at the Municipality of Florence, and we want to share our experience in uh, business government data sharing in the city that is going from planning to action. By trying, we acknowledge since the beginning that sharing data is a tricky corner that has to be torn. There's a lot of lack of communication. Not even the experts know about all the current innovation, and that means let alone citizens. And unfortunately, reinventing the wheel is the favorite sport of many, and it makes uh, us uh, waste a lot of energy. That's why, since 2016, a collaboration system based on the idea to facilitate smart city action and create a really smart communities has been developed among all the public actors on the territories, uh, at the municipality, the Tuscany region, the University of Florence, and uh, so on, together with all the utilities, uh, and with also some private actors uh, that were answering to the public notice uh, for the expression of interest to join the public actors to spread the, the digital competencies. This was a kickoff activity, let me say, that gave us the opportunity to start to share skills, data, infrastructure, services based on the idea that share pay you back and facilitate the transition from it's not my responsibility to together we grow. That is well represented in Florence by Firenze Semplice.it that is a no-logo platform to find all the information quickly and directly where found services who is responsible for to find contacts and let me say solve the doubt of the citizens. The main idea is to have a place in which they ensure for a real data driving cities. Then the infrastructure is seen as an enable to reinforce the collaboration, creating the right environment to stay and share. This is our smart city control room that is a part of a formal and operational collaboration starting among the municipality of Florence, the University of Florence, all the public utilities in the territories, and uh, since last December, the Tuscan region. The smart city control room is a cooperative model for managing the city and sharing the data. And the management of city services is a typical multi-operator activities. It is like an orchestra in which each instrument has a fundamental role for the harmony of the music and the city acts as the conductor. It's a place to stay together and we have been uh, thinking about it following this idea. In a glance, we can see who is in the smart city control room and from who the data are also coming. The operators that are working in the, physically in the smart city control room are the municipality, the local policy, the traffic management operators, the parking management operator, 
the road financer operator, the public transport operators, bus and tramway services, and the utility that are working on the area of water, waste, and energy. The data that are managed inside this uh, unique smart city platform are also coming from providers that are out physically from the smart city control room. That are typically the sharing mobility operators, the motorway operator, taxis companies, tourist bus services operator, and logistics operators. To go through some uh, physical use case, I give the floor to my colleague Chiara. Thank you, Alessandra, and good morning, everyone. If managing the city is a multi operator activity, Mobility and road network management are emblematic examples since a lot of data are involved and each operator activity takes place at the same time on the same network. The municipality regulates and coordinates these activities through road permits, maintenance activity planning, in order to assure a, a good quality of service for citizens in terms of traffic fluidification, timely public transport service, road safety, safety, and so on. Each operator in the SCCR can, on one hand, access a, a, access a synoptic view of the city built through dashboard, uh, mainly um, through dashboards, and on the other, uh, be in contact with, with his reference center and use his internal management system inside the SCCR. The operativity of the control room is both for real-time activities and for planning. Uh, data sharing is a precondition to be inside the SCCR and to benefit from data from all operators, including uh, real-time uh, data. Um, a big part of data uh, used in the SCR are internal data, of course, owned by the municipality, that is to say traffic uh, flow data, real-time events on the networks, such as accidents, uh, road work planning, um, parking availabilities, and so on, as you see in the slide. And some of them are instead owned by private companies that are inside the SCR. Uh, for instance, public transport operators and utilities in blue, all in blue in the picture, while other data are, are, are owned by private companies that are not represented in the SCCR in yellow in the, in the picture. Regarding this different type of operators, I will here briefly present three use cases referring to three uh, data sharing different approaches used by the, mus the municipality. Uh, use case one uh, refers to public transport operators' data. Here, uh, starting from a traditional approach based on a contract, uh, by adopting the SCCR paradigm based on a cooperation model, we are able to take a step forward in data sharing effectiveness, since the private companies can clearly recognize the benefits uh, they pay back in sharing their, their data. The initial model was an agreement-based model, and uh, it relies on the negotiating power of the municipality, of course, and is, it is typically used in public services, operated under concession after a public tender, and on an agreement subscription that regulates the service. Uh, in this case, a payment to the concession holder for data sharing is envisioned, and uh, and data usually concern operativity and users, uh, which is customers for the public transport operators. This model works, but of course is the cost is very high, as it has been already said in the previous presentations. And uh, the cooperative model on the other um, side is rather based on cooperation among public and private, in which both benefit from sharing their own data data and there is a not not contract but a collaboration agreement uh, let's uh, move to use case two uh, which refers to sharing mobility data that is in florence um, 
is ongoing um, related to cars, bikes, e-motorbikes and e-scooters sharing service. Um, this is based on, on, a, on, on a authoritative uh, model, of the, on the authoritative power of, of the municipality. Uh, data sharing obligation is inside the contract, so it is a compulsory condition for the authorization to, to be able to run the service in the city. And is it, in Italy, it is typically used for services uh, for citizens authorized by the municipality without any contract of service. The lesson learned here is that restricted conditions uh, could affect competition between operators on the market. So, but on the other side, few conditions can affect quality of data and, and integration costs. Um, going to the last one, the third use case, uh, this is about the contact we had with Waze, so Google Waze. Uh, the question here is which model to use and how to share data, because it was clear that it is not only a question of intent and, and wish to work together, but also an issue connected to systems interoperability. Um, the interest of parties was quite clear, but the difficulty in implementing an effective sharing system for both parties prevented the agreement despite the intentions of both parties. Thank you for your attention. That's it. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks, Alessandra and Chiara. A uh, very interesting example also here, uh, I think that what we can learn is that uh, there are a lot of best practices really in the mobility sector. I mean, it's it's really possibly the sector where uh, also this data sharing has been uh, explored more. It would be really interesting to, to see also to learn um, uh, to see if there are the same opportunities also in, in other sectors. This will come in, in the next, uh, possibly in the next uh, workshops. Um, we don't have uh, a lot of time for, for questions. So I, I really give the floor to the participants uh, for in, in case you have uh, any questions to all the speakers. Um, we, we learn a lot today. I think uh, you also have a lot of information in your brain, possibly uh, not easy also to, to select uh, the, the most important uh, question. Uh, but please, the floor is yours. You can uh, express, uh, you can raise your hand or write in the chat as you wish. If you don't have a question, I have many, so just let me know <laughs> and I can go on. I think especially the quality, I mean, of data, that was one of the aspects that Ron was stressing a lot. And really for me, it would be, you know, how to, to increase that quality, that data quality from the public, the, from the public sector. What, I mean, from a, from a, uh, from a perspective, you know, from a public administration, uh, what do you think that you would need? You you said, uh, for instance, uh, the the political will is one of the the main barrier, uh, you know, but maybe there are other aspects uh, as well. This was one of my <clears throat> questions. Yeah. Um, there's one thing as like being the first, uh, I'm being the first uh, set, setting up a network. That's one thing, but I want to express something about the, the smaller cities. One of the things in building this network that we do uh, is like uh, we we will ask the 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 the, the, the Tom Toms and Googles in this world to say what do you do with the data you already have from other cities. So we can report to the smaller cities who say, okay, we want to invest in this data. There will always be a manager or politician say, okay, we will invest this money, but are we sure that they will use our data? And therefore we need to have this response of these co uh, uh, companies, like they are using it, if uh, like the other cities already raised the quality of their data. And if you do so, we can show them like, okay, they are really going to use it. So that's one of the political things that should be in the whole rollout plan. 
Yes, of course, uh, something in return. That's uh, that's uh, that's definitely uh, a point. I have a question from uh, Marina for Ron um, about the Google. Did I understand well that you have the same goals with Google? Uh, could you elaborate more on that, please? Yeah, as I say, it's almost frightening sometimes to when you work on, on, on the goals. In fact, like what we as a city do, we want to have a, a positive impact on citizens. That's what we work for. But these same citizens are also users of Google. So if you like, uh, as I showed, like having less nuisance uh, because uh, the, 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 the tunnels are uh, closed in the systems, uh, and it, it's, it gives a positive uh, a product for Google, but it gives also less pollutants and, and, and nuisance in the city. So that's really the same. And in many other cases, it was it was really interesting to say like, okay, even sometimes they had were more strict on the goals that we want to have, and they were almost the same goals. It's very interesting. Yeah. Thanks. Anyone else? Johan, Johan raised his hand. Ah, yes, please, Johan. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Um, so again, uh, uh, thank you for, for for the presentations and maybe uh, another question, follow up question for Ron, uh, because of the the very interesting uh, collaboration with with Google uh, in Amsterdam. So you mentioned Ron um, that on the one hand. Um, Google, you know, has a specific way of, of working, very quick results, uh, very flexible and agile, and also um, hinting to let's make some errors or let's make some mistakes, uh, learning by doing, of course. Um, how have you been dealing with that um, as, a, as a city with your responsibilities of, of, of data sharing and uh, everything that that entails? Thank you. It was a journey, I must say. It was really like in the beginning that that uh, we found out like the, the small example I want to explain is like the first thing we made an and uh, uh, appointment. Okay, let's do something together. Okay, it's nice. And three days later, I already had an, uh, an email like I didn't receive any data. What's wrong? And it turned being in, in, in the fairly, very early steps of working together and we really had to think, okay, if you want to be in this game, we really should change something. And like the CTO office, that we work, we all, everybody there, all 200 people there, they work agile, uh, they work data driven. So we understand them better than, and so, and we are uh, helping our the the the, the, the colleagues in the um, in, in the rest of the of the organization who some most of the time work traditionally. We help them. To, to really get things going. So sometimes I say I'm somebody with a one long arm and one short arm. So sometimes I say to Google, maybe a little bit uh, less stressy, and I, the long arm is pulling my colleague to having a, a, a better result. But the other way is like the colleagues who are really used to that, they react with, within four hours to a, an email of, uh, of Google. So they're really, so they have to get used to that. Thanks. Any other questions? I see Marion. Yes. From uh, Ren, please. Yes, I, I had a more a reaction than a question, maybe. It's striking. It's uh, the examples and the present. All the presentations were very interesting, and thank you uh, for all the the speakers. Uh, I'm. What is striking for me is that um, it seems like in the examples given by the two cities, it's more bilateral relationships between cities and um, and the the businesses. And uh, I think that what we try to build, and maybe it's very, very ambitious in Rennes, is a sort of a multilateral approach to to the sharing, data sharing be between cities and businesses. And I wonder whether it, uh, it is the case, maybe more in, in the example of, of uh, Firenze, um, uh, you, you said that it was a collective approach and, and I'm, I wonder how do you build this collective approach? Do you have uh, the same rules for sharing data with the businesses 
in the sector of mobility, which were which was your example. This is the question for for Firenze and uh, for Amsterdam. The question is: Do you have only bilateral relationships with the businesses, or do you try to build on on uh, 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 collective framework, uh, which could be uh, enforced to the to the different businesses you're working with? Thank you. Good. Uh, good question. <laughs> Colleagues, okay. Yeah. Um, let me say that our approach is, uh, as you have been um, underlined, more a collective one because in the smart city control rooms, all the data are shared among the operators that are part of them. Not not only the one that are physically in the smart city control room, but also the one that are sharing the data as private operators. That's something that is, um, could be done because um, this sharing system is based on the idea of the public interest, and good services for cities and citizens. That means that we can find a common goal to achieve the better impact in the cities. Because uh, um, the example on uh, um, mobility is the easier because at the same impact for the uh, for the public uh, um, participants and the private ones because both of uh, the parties are intending to achieve the best results in terms of efficiencies and in terms also of a good quality of services uh, despite the fact that it is managed from a private or public uh, operators and that help us uh, in sharing data um, let me say that uh, when we are going to share the data and we find an agreement, it's very clear in the agreements which data uh, we are using for which uh, uh, goal and aim and uh, which are the rules of the um, management of the data. So uh, it's a work uh, that is ongoing, let me say, because um, it's always evolving, not only the needs, but also the technology. So we are trying to put together this, uh, um, um, these challenges, but at the end, some mobility give us the, the better way to have, uh, despite the bilateral uh, um, relation, the, um, the collective ones, because when we make this agreement, it is clear that the data will be shared in the smart city control rooms. And people are aware about the smart city control room, who is in and which is the headquarters. And I think this is the real added value, because when you are making also a bilateral agreement, this bilateral agreement is, there, is being uh, is supposed to be in part on a smart city control room that is putting together all the actors. It is true that not all the data are uh, open, let me say, to all the people that are in the smart city control room, but all the data that are uh, considered as fundamental to be known for all the patterns in are shared. Sometimes are aggregate, of course, and sometimes are real uh, on our real time data. So it is true, it's a scaling up experience, let me say, from bilateral agreement to a collective use. Good, thanks. Ron? Yeah, it's, it's the same, goes, same goes uh, with me. Um, uh, in the examples is bilateral, but we have also other uh, examples for collective uh, working on, a, on an ecosystem, for instance, on safety in the, in the harbor of Amsterdam. So we have a, a nice experience that we ask uh, companies to share their most critical data in case of a big disaster. And we did some workshops with them. And I was personally, I was very surprised uh, uh, telling them what we want to show them. Work. We want to have a common operational picture, like what is the, where is the problem and where is not the problem in the harbor in, in the situation of a, of a disaster. And they really want to share data. They said they they told us like uh, our owners uh, say this is crucial. So we have we will have a better situation. It's more under control, and it's even better for our customers if you do that. So uh, so if you make a, a, an ecosystem where companies are sharing data, critical data, uh, uh, also although they are competitors in in certain situations, 
it's it's very positive if you if you do that. Thank you. Uh, so I'm uh, I'm looking at the time at the, at the time I um, I just want to uh, I see in the chat a comment by Logroño uh, in Spain. Uh, Ron, by, to Ron the Sarah, do you want to? I, I give you the floor if you want just to share the comment. Uh, Yeah, it's just a brief question. Um, the the Spanish city of uh, of uh, well, the Spanish network of smart cities uh, in the framework of uh, the the resilience and recovery funds uh, is drafting like a a wish list of things we'd like to do. One of the first things uh, we'd like to do with our members is is is, is to share that space. So uh, cities can leverage from the knowledge of other cities, especially like cities like Barcelona, uh, Madrid have done a lot, but smaller cities that are, are also members of the network are not so advanced. So we'd like them also to, to benefit from, from the collective knowledge and, uh, and also start working with, with businesses. And uh, we'd like to ask whether like, uh, what kind of approach would you follow? Like take the leading cities and then the smaller cities to follow or like your case in Amsterdam, like you've been doing things and then you were involving other cities for like a national sort of uh, database or you would start collect, like putting all the cities uh, together for one goal is gonna be sort of impossible, I would say. Yeah, so that's that's uh, we 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 uh, uh, chosen for uh, for uh, approach that that the leading cities are are taking the leap, but but are really thinking in a network in in scaling up. Uh, so it makes it easier, or like these big companies will not talk to smaller cities; they don't take the time. So if if we have some implementations, we always like it. That that cities directly around Amsterdam, but also the rest of the Dutch cities, can can uh, ha have a, the, the same result as we do. Because otherwise, if only Amsterdam had this result, sooner or later, this big companies say, okay, it's not scaled enough. And the same things go for like uh, like uh, we would like it very much to have not having a, a, a Dutch network, but have a European network. That's something I would really like to. Uh, uh, discuss about like what can the European Commission do to have these national initiatives grow like European initiatives because the impact for that companies will be even bigger and then they really start listening more and more. So that's I think that's the way to go. Well, we we could actually have a, a, a better uh, last comment, I think, because uh, really on on uh, to stress on the point of cooperation, sharing experiences, and share share also a, a joint efforts. It's uh, it's really what we are doing uh, in uh, you know like in in Euro cities at European level, but also uh, with all the other city networks in the Living.eu initiative. So uh, I really uh, would like to to really. Start Stress again the, the fact that we really need uh, different cities uh, with different size and different experiences, but also other level of governance. I think that uh, also the experience of Florence, that cooperating a lot with the Tuscany region, it's it's really interesting and really helpful, you know, for for both parties to grow and to upscale. So let's uh, let's take these examples and and try to replicate it and to involve uh, as many partners as possible because as you as you said and as we can see uh, it's a new experience this business to government data sharing it's it's new and there is a lot it's a complex also practice so we really need a lot of different players and experience and, and efforts to be put together uh, we are already five minutes uh, 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 late so I I, I would like to thank all the speakers. Uh, I think it was uh, extremely interesting. Um, and uh, this is just uh, the first, as I said, of the of five workshops. Um, so the next one is uh, in, uh, in two weeks. Uh, Roel, can you remind me exactly the date? Yeah, the next one is on uh, the 19th of uh, May at the same time from 10 to 11.30. So it's every 
every two uh, two, two weeks. weeks. Yeah, pretty much. Very, very good. So uh, thank you so much. We will send you again the invitations for uh, for the next ones. And also, uh, please express your interest in case uh, you want to participate presenting an experience from uh, from your city. Um, that's all from my side. I don't know if uh, there are other comments from the European Commission or Andrea or from the, the two cities, Florence and uh, uh, and Amsterdam. No, thank you. It it was extremely interesting. So very pleased uh, and to be continued, as you said. Thank you. Thank you very much. Looking forward to the next step. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much. Thank Bye you. and see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.